Yeah, Limadat. Today we're really pleased to have Dr. Shamez Ladani, a consultant in immunization at Public Health England. Shamez, I've had a lot of questions about the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. So can you help us understand the process taken to validate the safety of the vaccine and help us understand what is meant by efficacy of the vaccine? Yali Madad Akbar, it's really nice to meet you again. Uh, I think it's important that we try and deal with these questions so that the information that we have is readily available to our community. The questions that you ask are very important because what we have to do is try and make sure that we get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. In terms of the safety and the efficacy, let me start with safety first. The vaccine has been tested on around 50,000 people before it was licensed, and that's for all the vaccines out there. And based on very detailed data collection when the vaccines were given, there were no concerns about the safety of these vaccines. But that was more than a month ago. We now have data for millions of people who've had this vaccine, not only in the UK, but in many other parts of the world. And it continues to show lack of any safety concerns at all. All these vaccines so far are very, very safe, and there are no major side effects associated with the vaccine. Okay, great. What about the efficacy? The efficacy is a more difficult question to answer. So the studies, when they gave it to 50,000 people, they did look to see those who got vaccines, whether they got disease and those who didn't get the vaccine and how much disease they got. And what you can see is a very clear difference where vaccination protected about 90% of all infections in those who had at least one dose of the vaccine. Now, these are very short-term studies. We know that the efficacy in the short term is excellent. What we don't have data for is long-term efficacy, but we have time to collect that information. The priority right now is to provide short-term protection, get through the winter period, and then we can assess whether the long-term efficacy is good enough or whether we need more doses in the future. Okay, that's really clear. Thank you for that. So will the vaccine work against the new strain of the virus? Absolutely. At the moment, there is no evidence that any of the variant strains will escape the vaccine and the antibodies that the vaccine provides. So far, all the variants that have been tested are destroyed by the antibodies that the vaccines uh, provide. Okay, great. Thank you. So, Shamez, when the scientists tell us that the new strain of the virus is much more transmissible, what does that mean? That's a really interesting question. Like all viruses, the SARS-CoV virus is also constantly changing as part of its evolution. And the most fittest strains will last for longer and have a better evolutionary advantage over the other strains. And what you find is that if some strains are better at surviving and causing illness and infection and moving around, then they are more likely to survive compared to the strains that are weaker. And what we're finding is new strains coming along where they have a few mutations in their genetics that just allow them to move around a bit better than the older strains. And what we're finding with the new UK variant strain, for example, is that it can jump from one person to another much more efficiently than the other viruses. It just means that if you don't have your social distancing and other infection control measures, your risk of catching the virus goes up for the same risk that you had before. But it also means that if you continue to social distance and you take the precautions that have been advised, then you are not at increased risk compared to the other viruses. Okay, so just continue to take all the precautions and you should be okay. Yes. Okay, the reports that some patients get COVID-19 after taking the vaccine, is that so? Akbar, this is a very fundamental question, and it's very important that we get this messaging right. The vaccine takes at least two weeks to work. The immune system does not react to the vaccine in the first two weeks. And therefore, anybody taking the vaccine now will not be protected for the next two weeks until the immune system starts kicking in and making antibodies. And therefore, there will be reports of people getting the virus in, those, in that period of two weeks after the vaccine is given because there is no immunity at that time. And we're living at a time where there's a lot of virus. We are vaccinating those who have the highest risk of getting the virus, which is the older adults and healthcare professionals. So they're constantly being exposed to viruses and some of them may become ill with that virus before the immunity kicks in from the vaccine. So yes, 
There are reports, but most of them are within the first two weeks of the first dose of vaccine. And then the vaccine will start protecting and the risk goes down dramatically. All right, and, but some of the media also have some wilder claims. Can you respond to that? There are a lot of claims about the vaccine and everything has to get reported and it gets checked. In the UK, we have the MHRA, which is actively and regularly monitoring the side effects of the vaccine, including deaths. One of the concerns uh, is that there have been reports in the media about deaths following vaccination. Now, you have to remember that the population we are vaccinating are over 80 years old. They are very frail. They're vulnerable. They're living in care homes. They have a lot of comorbidities. Many of them will have died anyways. And it just happens that sometimes they may die after vaccination. There is no evidence whatsoever that the deaths are related to the vaccine. And we know that because the MHRA checks and reports on side effects on a regular basis. And we have now had more than 4 million doses and there have been no safety concerns with the Pfizer vaccine. And we're getting the same level of data with the other vaccines as it gets rolled out. Okay, so no concerns from you there. Um, is, we have two vaccines. Is one better than the other? Akbar, at this stage of the pandemic, uh, it is not important which vaccine you get. The important thing is to take the vaccine. What we know very clearly is that these two vaccines stop you getting severe infection. It stops you getting hospitalized and it stops you dying of COVID. There are many, many reports of effectiveness. These are numbers. They are very short term based. Uh, they are done in different populations and it's difficult to extrapolate as to exactly what the differences are. But at the end of the day, what we do have is very good data to show that post vaccines, even if you do get infection, protect you against hospitalizations and severe disease. So if you are cold and you are told to have the vaccine, please take whatever vaccine you get first. Okay, great. Are there any differences between the two in terms of allergies, side effects, effect on fertility? There are minimum differences between the two. The vaccine work very differently. Uh, the profile of the side effects is slightly different, but you have to remember that the vast majority of people who take these vaccines get no side effects at all. And therefore, in terms of whether one is better or worse than the other, there really isn't any evidence to suggest that at all. Both vaccines are equally safe and equally likely to give you minor symptoms such as pain in the arm, maybe feeling a bit tired, but uh, side effects are extremely rare with both vaccines. Okay, so we should just be thankful that there are two vaccines, which means that we can all get vaccinated quicker now. Yes. Is there any risk in the increased gap of 12 weeks between the two doses? Akbar, it makes absolute sense to try and increase that gap so that we can vaccinate more people as quickly as possible. With the Pfizer vaccine, for example, we know that one dose can give you up to 90% protection very quickly. And the second dose only adds another four or 5% to that. By trying to vaccinate everybody with two doses, we will end up only vaccinating half the population. By giving one dose to as many people as possible and giving them 90% protection, what we can do is save a lot more lives and a lot of hospitalizations. It is not that we are not going to vaccinate with the second dose. It is just that we're going to delay it slightly to 12 weeks. And in general, when you delay vaccinations between two doses, the immunity is actually better in the long run. So even though we may have to live with one dose of vaccine for 12 weeks, the idea is that the longer term immunity with this longer interval will be better with these new schedules. Okay, great. But it's really important to take that second dose because that is what gives you the lasting protection. Absolutely. And that is not changed at all. There is always uh, a plan to give the second dose. Uh, it's just that it may be a little more delayed than what would have been recommended. Okay, great. Now, once I've taken the vaccine, what is the risk of getting the infection? And can I then still transmit that infection on? Those are two very separate questions. The first one I will take is, can you get sick with the virus? Now, what we do know is that the vaccine is about 90% protective, at least the Pfizer one. And therefore, your risk is reduced by 90%, but it's not zero. But it also shows that if you do get the uh, virus, you are less likely to get very sick with it. You only get a mild infection and you recover quickly. In terms of passing on the virus, that's a more difficult question. 
we don't have the answers yet. We do not know if you that if you are vaccinated, you can't carry the virus and pass it on to others. And therefore, it is important that even if you're vaccinated, that you maintain all the advice that you get about social distancing and infection control practices until we have more data to tell us that it's safe for people to meet when they are vaccinated. Okay, excellent. And the scientists are working really hard all the time analyzing the data so that we can get more definitive answers as time goes on. Yes. Well, Shamiz, what is your one take home message for the Jamaat? There's a lot of people behind the scenes who have worked very hard to try and get the vaccine in place. There have been hundreds of clinical trials to find the right medication to treat this infection and to prevent this infection. And the vast majority of them have not worked. This is a brand new virus. We don't know enough about it. The only thing that we do know works is the vaccine because it stops you from getting sick and therefore stops everything else that goes with this infection, be it hospitalization, be it long COVID, be it a severe disease that leaves you uh, unwell for a very long time or death. Vaccination is the only thing that has been shown to protect that. And it's really important that we get everybody vaccinated as quickly as possible. Dr. Shamez Ladani, thank you very much.